Hi, I'm Josh Carving, and welcome to another Death Battle Prediction video, but first, Kakashi versus Obi-Wan. Uh, I am overall very, very glad that uh, Obi-Wan got a lot of the credit that he deserved. I'm very surprised that they used uh, some of the like much more higher end feats, like the Kip feat with the Black Hole and the um, Infant of Kaas, I believe it's called. Um, and I've heard some arguments regarding exactly why those might not have been necessarily able to be used, but um, uh, there is actually some other explanations for it, like how uh, uh, Uriel Poof, the guy who has terrible design, terrible name, but he somehow has one of the better feats. Um, he was like stabbed in the back and he was like dying while he was like holding this uh, uh, bomb that was gonna do like a chain reaction to blow up the planet. Um, but apparently there were there was some explanation as to why it on its own uh, was still sufficient enough to actually blow up a planet on its own. Um, so it, it is apparently a legitimate feat. Uh, the only issues that I really had, um, which I'm, I'm kind of sad they didn't go into on the Death Battle cast, considering it's kind of major, is that they really lowballed uh, uh, Kakashi's speed. Um, there are a lot of ways that you can get Kakashi a good bit higher than that, um, which is unfortunate, but happens. Um, I'm... I've been watching a lot of reaction videos and stuff like that, and a lot of people's issues are just basically, no, Duel Mangekyou Sharingan, which, yeah, they, they shouldn't have given him that, so it's entirely legitimate that, um, so overall, I don't think there's too much uh, to say for the research part. For the animation, it was extremely good. It was uh, one of the better ones. I am not sure if I would rank it above, um... I don't think I would rank it above Might Guy versus All Might, but I think it's on a similar tier as uh, Goro versus Machamp. I really liked the animation for that one. Um, the only thing that I will say for the animation that could have had a bit more of a an aspect is a bit more like I'll say choreography. Well, when you think of like Obi Wan and Kakashi, like what fights come to mind? You think of the um, the duel on Mustafar in, um, Star Wars Episode Three, and you think of, like, Kakashi versus Obito, both of which are just such tightly choreographed fights. Like, the, the martial arts is on point, like, and the, like, lightsaber skills are on point, but they barely went into very much, like, lightsaber combat at all, and a lot of it was fairly slow. I think they, they could have done really, really well with, like, a bit more fine-tuned, like, sword fight aspects. Especially if you have him use, like, the Chidori, um, uh, kunai for that. It could have been really, really cool. Um, that was the only thing that was underwhelming, though. I really liked the, uh, scene with the, uh, Genjutsu, uh, where, um, Obi-Wan saw Darth Vader. That was, that was a really cool decision to have that. Um, but that's basically all I've got to say for this one. Um, next we have Danny Fan Fenton, I suppose this is his real name, versus Jake Long. Uh, this is one that I've not thought of these characters in a long, long time. I remember watching American Dragon a decent amount when I was a lot younger. Um, I thought that was a decently good show. Like, uh, I didn't watch Danny Phantom much, um, but that's what research is for. And, um... After some research, it's not looking very good for Jake. Uh, the first thing I'll do is kind of go into their abilities. Um, Danny has intangibility and visibility. Um, cryokinesis, pyrokinesis, uh, electrokinesis. Um, he can possess things. Um, he... Oh, there were some other things. He can... He has regen. He can regenerate from, like, a puddle... Um, he can manipulate his body in crazy ways. Flight, uh, his ghostly whale is, like, his strongest ability. Um, oh, I mean, I know I'm missing stuff, too. He has tons of, like, weapons and stuff, but though a lot of his weapons are specifically for use against ghosts, I think his, like, 
uh, ghost thermos thing has been shown to capture other supernatural beings, so it could potentially work on um, on Jake when he's in this dragon form specifically. Um, and so that's what um, Danny's working with for abilities, which is a good amount of abilities. Um, but then you have Jake, who he has claws, he can fly. Um, oh, both of, both of them can split themselves into multiple duplicates, though Jake struggles to maintain a second clone, like a, a one clone, while uh, Danny can go up to, I think, three or five other clones. Um, so, yeah, that, that's an advantage in Danny's favor. Uh, he can breathe fire. Um, that's kind of it. A lot of Jake's fights come down to essentially brawling. Um, that said, he is capable of hitting intangible ghosts, or they were like specters, um, that were attacking him. So, he should be able to hit Danny even when he is intangible. That's a pretty good counter there. Um, but that's kind of it in terms of his, like, actual abilities. He has a couple, like, artifacts that were, like, one-time use gear, but he doesn't have them anymore. They were used, like, once. Um, so I don't really think that he's going to be getting them. As far as, uh, like, their stats... Um, well, yeah, like, that's basically it for Jake. He just kind of only has, like, a couple things. Um, what's weird is that a lot of his abilities are actually centered around, um, essentially, like, when he is a human, he puts parts of, like, dragon on him to give him, like, an aspect of the sense of that, of his, like, dragon form, but while maintaining human form, essentially. So it's not actually terribly useful for this fight. Um... So then you come to stats, which right now Danny definitely takes the lead in terms of the abilities. And then you come to strength, which um, Danny takes by a good long shot. Uh, essentially, just like the there was like a, a monster that like covered the entirety of a like a town, and he used his like ice beam to freeze the entirety of it, like throughout the entire town and then used one ghost ray and just destroyed it outright. So that's pretty solid. It, it in, I believe uh, some of the calculations for him uh, come down to being about um, city level. I think city to island is the range that most people would usually go with for him. Um, and then you have speed which, uh, in the ghost world, uh, he manages to fly interplanetary distances. Um, one of the uh, calculations for that ended up being, like, 1.3 times the speed of light. And then, um, with his, um, with his ghost ray, which apparently has been stated in canon to be light speed. I, I have not seen the exact citation for that. Um, but if Death Battle does use that, then that's going to be very interesting. Uh, he has dodged his own ghostly ray that was deflected back at him, and he has been hit by it too. So, um, so I think that feat came out to being about three times the speed of light with when he dodged it. Um, so about three times the speed of light and about city to island level compared to Jake, who. Uh, his best feat was basically a creature creating an earthquake that came out to about a um, like small town level. He does have one controversial feat where there was like a, a creature that was going to break off the uh, eastern, um, like eastern side of the continent and like move it over, and it w was going to be like a multi-continent level feat. But he never actually fought it. And he has no real reason to scale to that feat. I think the most that he actually got was just, like, splashed by some of the water from the attack, an attack from it. Um, and it still kind of fucked him up. So it's, like, it's questionable if you would actually use that or scale him to it. So I'd prefer not to. Uh, it's it's just not really... It's an, also an outlier that is, like, 
a million, like, I think it's like billions of times higher than anything else that he has. So not only is it questionable scaling, but it's also questionable, like, consistency. He just doesn't have that most of the time. Um, and in terms of speed, um, most of the times he is basically credited for being, like, subsonic. Um, not even really, like, that much faster than sound. I think there's a couple uh, feats that you can put him up to, I think, hypersonic, but um, some of them are questionable. But then there is also uh, the Hunts clan using these weapons that fire, like, beams. And it remains to be seen if they're light. It's possible the Death Battle has found some evidence of them being light. Uh, if they have, I think one of the calculations for it ended up being about, like, nine times the speed of light. So he would have a decent advantage in speed over Danny. But at the end of the day, he's not going to be able to do anything to him. And anything that he does manage to do, Danny can just regenerate from. Um, he, Danny can ultimately kind of one-shot him. Uh, with most of his abilities. He has a wider array of abilities. He can possess him, which Jake has sometimes resisted, most of the times hasn't. Um, so I really don't think that Jake has much of a chance here, um, which is sad, because I prefer the character. Um, I actually think that the uh, Jake and Rose, how that whole thing developed that was actually one of the more like interesting relationships in cartoons for a while just on the fact that like i don't know they were enemies and it was written in a very very well done way um but yeah that's basically all i've got to say for this one. Oh, other than the animation uh i've seen the um the sneak peek of it looks okay um i'm not too sure i'll i'll think about it. Yeah, like, I'll, well, I'm, I'm hoping that it gets better. Um, as of the current moment, it's a little bit shaky, but we'll see. Alright, I uh, will see you guys for the next one. I'm not too sure what we're going to get, but if I had to guess, probably something with Beerus, because that's one of the other characters, and this is going to be the uh, mid-season finale. Uh, so I'm going to go with Beerus versus... Mm. Beerus versus... I don't want to say Arceus. Maybe Arceus. Um, it's kind of more or less what I'm going to have to go with, but... There's there's not a whole lot of actually like good matches for Beerus. Uh, there's like a Sailor Galaxia um, Asira. I do not want it to be. I am really hoping it is not versus Asira. Best Dad doesn't deserve that. Um, but we'll see what ends up happening. I will see you guys when that one gets announced. You have a good one.